the master of Grinch. Daredevil, the comic magazine that dares to be different. Daredevil, the greatest name in comics. No, not that Daredevil. The first one. What's that? You didn't know there was a first one? The original Daredevil has been largely forgotten by the public. But once upon a time, he sold as well as Batman or Superman. The story behind Daredevil begins with publisher Lev Gleason. Gleason quit Harvard to become a doughboy in World War I. After the war, he returned to New York City to become a stockbroker. He quickly left the world of high finance and joined the expatriate movement in Paris. While in Paris, he became exposed to left-wing political thought. The Paris cafes were full of Bolsheviks and political radicals. By the mid-1930s, Gleason had returned to New York City. He began working for the Eastern Color Printing Company and was there when the first modern comic book rolled off the printing press. In 1936, he was the editor of Tip Top Comics. Gleason knew firsthand how well those early comic books were selling. Then DC National published Action Comics No. 1, which featured the first appearance of Superman. It created a national sensation. Gleason struck off on his own and started up his own company, Comic House. Comic House's first title was Silver Street Comics. It was named after a popular make and model of Pontiac. Automobiles. Silver Street Comics featured a number of heroes, but oddly enough, the star was an Asian supervillain known as The Claw. Starting with issue three, a super fast hero named Silver Streak appeared. DC Comics had already introduced The Flash two months before, so Silver Streak never caught on. Three issues later, artist writer Jack Binder created a new backup strip. The story centers around Bart Hill. As a young boy, his father and mother were murdered by gangsters. Bart was tortured, left mute, and scarred with the shape of a boomerang branded into his chest. Bart grew up to seek revenge on the killers as Daredevil, the master of courage. Armed with only his trusty boomerang, Daredevil fights the forces of crime and evil. Silver Street Comics editor Jack Cole realized the potential. He took over the strip and made some not-so-subtle changes. Daredevil is no longer a mute. Unlike Batman and Superman, Daredevil is one of the first heroes to make colorful, cocky comments to the bad guys he fought. Cole also changed the black and white costume to a more striking one of blue and red. The changes didn't stop there. A love interest was added in Tanya. Unlike Lois Lane, she knew Bart's alter ego. Cole's masterstroke, though, was pitting Silver Streak star The Claw against the made-over hero. It was the start of an epic battle between good and evil. Readers responded by scooping Silver Street comics off the shelves. Sales were so impressive. Editor Jack Cole was hired away by Quality Comics. Lev Gleason believed that comic books could be more than just kiddie books. He believed that comics could stand up with the best literature of the day. He began to refer to his comics as illustories. Cole was gone, but Gleason found two men who felt the same way about comic books as he did. They were Charles Byro and Bob Wood. Byro and Wood came just in time to launch Daredevil into his own title. Lev Gleason was a staunch anti-fascist. He was a member of a committee against Spanish dictator Francisco Franco. While the Blitz was hitting London, Gleason wanted to make his own stand against Hitler and the Nazis. The first issue of Daredevil featured a striking anti-Hitler cover. Inside its pages, readers found Daredevil teaming up with Silver Streak and other Lev Gleason heroes to fight the evil forces of the Axis. Daredevil takes on spies, German U-boats, and has an air duel with Hermann Goering. He even takes a swing at Hitler himself. To finish the book, readers were treated to a unique graphic biography of Hitler and the Nazi party. The United States was still months away from entering the war. After Pearl Harbor, Daredevil continued fighting the Axis powers. He wasn't alone. A gang of juveniles known as the Little Wise Guys began to accompany him on his adventures. Scarecrow, Pee Wee, Jock, and Meatball were a popular addition to the series. Then Byro did the unthinkable. Meatball dies. His death struck a sympathetic nerve with homefront readers who were used to seeing the names of their local war dead published in the newspapers. Daredevil was hitting print runs as high as 900,000 copies a month. 1942 was a big year for Lev Gleason. As a publisher, he would turn the industry on its head. As a political activist, he would come under scrutiny. Lev Gleason believed in sharing the wealth. 
which was a popular slogan in left-leaning political circles. Gleason also believed in profit sharing with his employees. He told Byro and Wood that if they came up with a great idea, it would make them all rich. During a night of bar hopping, Byro and Wood pondered over Gleason's proposal. Somehow, they began telling each other stories about criminals and mobsters from their neighborhood. They decided that crime would make a great comic book. It'd be a comic book based on real people and real violence. Crime Does Not Pay was the biggest thing to hit comics since Superman. Print runs ran over 2 million copies. Gleason claimed 6 million monthly readers on the cover. The industry belief was that each comic book was read by 4 people. Sales like that launched a wave of imitators. The era of the superhero was at an end. Problems for the politically outspoken Lev Gleason began when newspapers reported on communist infiltration at the anti-fascist committee meetings that Gleason chaired and attended. Gleason then got into a war of words on the editorial pages of the Newcastle Tribune defending the Soviet Union. These editorials drew the attention of the New York World Telegram and the FBI. Upon investigation, it was discovered that Gleason had joined the Communist Party in 1933 under the name Alexander Lev. He had printed communist periodicals using his Comic House publishing address. Gleason had also given publishing and layout advice to communist and socialist newspapers. His non-comic magazine, Readerscope, regularly printed articles by known communist writers. The FBI began a file on Mr. Gleason. By the end of 1944, they were reading his mail and investigating his banking transactions. In 1946, Lev Gleason appeared before the House Committee of Un-American Activities. He refused to produce material they requested or directly answer their questions. By a vote of 292 to 56, Gleason was found contempt of Congress. He was fined $500 and received a three-month suspended sentence. Gleason's problems did not end there. New trouble began brewing when widely read magazines printed articles tying juvenile delinquency with comic book violence. It created a backlash that led to public burning of comic books. In an attempt to salvage the reputation of the comic book industry, Gleason helped form the Association of Comic Magazine Publishers. Byron Gleason wrote up a code of conduct for the ACMP. It failed. Only a few publishers joined the organization, even fewer followed its guidelines, and the public was less than receptive. But things weren't all bad. While the circulation of Crime Does Not Pay grew and grew, Daredevil continued to do well because of the bold direction of Charles Byro. Daredevil had gone from fighting with his boomerang to fighting with his brains. His villains were no longer flesh and blood. Instead, he was fighting greater societal evils. Domestic violence, child abuse, suicide, mental illness, alcoholism. The little wise guys were still with him. They became a bigger and bigger part of the story. Daredevil appeared less and less. Daredevil sometimes only appeared as his alter ego, Bart Hill. As time went on, Daredevil faded away. Only his name remained on the title. Jack Binder, who originally created Daredevil, went on to co-create The Defender for Timely Comics. He set up his own art studio in 1942 where he illustrated the Shadow and Doc Savage pulp magazines. Jack Cole, who first pitted Daredevil against the Claw, left Gleason for Quality Comics, where he worked on The Spirit with Will Eisner and went on to create Plastic Man. He became the preeminent illustrator for Playboy magazine. In August 1958, Jack Cole mailed out two letters, one to his wife, one to his friend and Playboy publisher, Hugh Hefner. A few hours later, Jack Cole was found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The contents of those letters have never been made public. An even more tragic fate awaited Bob Wood. As the 50s wore on, Wood became prey to alcohol and gambling addictions. He also racked up large debts with bookies and loan sharks. In 1958, his downward slide turned into an avalanche. After an 11-day drinking binge, Wood beat his fiancée to death in a fit of anger. Wood was convicted of manslaughter. He would serve three years of a five-year sentence. After his release from prison, friends tried to get him a job drawing comics, but his hands were too shaky to draw. He was working as a short order cook when three men he owed money to forced him into a car. Wood's body was found dumped on the New Jersey Turnpike. Charles Byro is best remembered for his work on Daredevil and Boy Comics at Lev Gleason Publishing, but he also created Steel Sterling and the very popular Air Boy. After a 16 year run on Daredevil, Byro left the world of comics for the world of television. He became a graphic designer for NBC Television in 1956. As legend has it, in the early days of Marvel Comics, Stan Lee would call up Byro and they'd have long conversations about writing comic books. Charles Byro entered the Will Eisner Hall of Fame in 2002. Lev Gleason was one of the most successful publishers of the Golden Age. 
in the post-war pre-television era of the late 1940s, Gleason outsold everyone. Daredevil, Boy Comics, and Gleason's other crime title, Crime and Punishment, each sold over a million copies a month. William M. Gaines, the publisher of EC Comics and a close friend of Gleason's, was once asked about the sales of Crime Does Not Pay. Gaines speculated that Crime Does Not Pay was selling over 4 million copies an issue in 1947 and 48. Gleason didn't have many titles, but the ones he had sold big. In the political arena, Gleason publicly proclaimed that he was not a communist. In 1950, the FBI felt that Gleason was approachable. On FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover's orders, an interview was set up. After the interview, in an FBI memo to Hoover, Gleason is described as cooperative. With his political problems behind him, the issue of comic book violence and juvenile delinquency remained. The Association of Comic Magazine Publishers, the organization that Gleason helped form to curb comic book violence, gave way to the Comics Code Authority in 1954. The CCA targeted the crime comics that Gleason published. They also targeted Gleason. Gleason hung on for two more years. Between the CCA and the new medium of television, comic book sales plummeted. Gleason ended his comic line in 1956. He spent the remainder of his years dabbling in real estate. As for Daredevil, he was slowly phased out of the very magazine that carried his name. The title came to an end with the rest of the Gleason line in 1956. In 1963, Stan Lee at Marvel Comics contacted Gleason and Byro about launching a new character under the Daredevil name. Byro and Gleason both gave their blessing. Over the years, the original Daredevil has been revived under new names. Roy Thomas at Alter Ego Magazine renamed him Double Dare. The AC Comics revival called him Red Devil, even though half his costume was blue. And recently, Dynamite Entertainment relaunched him as the death-defying devil. Regardless of his name, he remains one of the most interesting superheroes ever created. 